Look what I got. It's a bouncy ball with a Jolteon inside of it. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? This one's really old. It's uh, from, uh, yeah, back from when Pokemon was first uh, released. Pretty cool. Yeah, but anyway, uh, you know, this is not very valuable. But you know what is very valuable? Money. Great segue, huh? Because today I'm going to tell you why uh, why you shouldn't put money in your video game. And you're like thinking like, well, don't put money in your video game. Why not? Like, well, I'll tell you because it creates problems. Like, because you money as a mechanic, you can just put money in your game. You got to put other mechanics in your game for the money to be spent on. And then you have to put in more mechanics. Because like, you can just put in money, you can just put like one thing in. Cause like, you know, that's kind of lame. You gotta like put like more mechanics and people, and then, and then some designers will try to fix the problem because you know, it's like, oh, this money, the, this mechanic of money spending is boring. I'll add in bartering. Yeah. And then they have to put in a bunch of mechanics for that and then just ends up sucking anyway. And so really like, it, it, it's weird. Cause like, why would you even do it? Why even put money in, my, in your game, you know? And really the answer for that is, uh, well, because that's, you know, in real life there's money. So why isn't there no money in my game? You know, it makes sense in that aspect. You know, this, this happens all the time. You know, people just, we just, we are inclined to just make games like real life a little bit, like, right? Like, you know, like, uh, why, why put dogs in the game? You know, why put like a dog companion in the game? Well, because uh, dogs are man's best friend. You know, who doesn't want to have a dog? You know, why does Fallout have dog meat? Uh, because it's, you know, it's a dog, you know, that's just cool. Like, gotta pet the dog. That's just what people expect, kind of, right? You know, because it just makes sense. The thing about money, though, is that it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's, you know, video games aren't real life. You know, like, in, in real life, we need to, like, sleep and eat and we pay taxes. Video game characters don't do that. Really, in general, video game characters, they've got their one job, their one thing they do, and they just kind of do that. You know, like if you're, you know, a lot of video game characters are just trying to save the world or something. You know, like they don't really, sleeping and eating, it's not really, really part of it. Unless you're trying to game, create like a, like a sort of realistic game. It's like, it's like its own world, you know, and um, even that's the case, you know, like why, you know, what if, what if you're making a game that's set in a fantasy world? Well, why does this fantasy world have money? Maybe the society in this world doesn't use money, like they just... They don't need it anymore, but you know we do. We we have money, so you know we kind of we kind of bring that in there. You know, it's it's it, it just makes sense. It's also like it's also a very easy source of conflict. You know, because in our world, uh, money is like a source of conflict. You know, we always need to get more money. But what if it wasn't? What if we didn't have that problem? Well, we probably wouldn't be making games that have money in them, and that's kind of kind of the problem. And like this discussion, it goes so deep. It goes so deep, like every time I like imagine like making this video in my head, uh, my train of thought would always go in different directions and like to each other and like examples from games. Like usually I try to keep like a little bit of a, like a, 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 a like a line. In this case, I just got a bunch of topics and I even have like a list of video games to draw re to to like reference. And even that is just like a little list. Like I don't know in what order it's gonna be. So if I just go on tensions and then like go on different tensions and then I forgot to go back to them, uh, you're just gonna have to excuse me. This is gonna be a case where I like, where I finish the video and I'm like watching it back. I'm like, oh man, I should have talked about this. Should I talk about that? You know, like I, I can't, you know, it's just gonna happen. Okay, so let me start on my first topic. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about The Sims. Cause in The Sims, it does make sense to have money because The Sims is supposed to be like real life. Like the Sims, they sleep and they eat, and they also go to they go to work and they pay bills, and the entire point of that game is money, right? Because what is the goal of the Sims? Well, it's to it's to make more money. It's to get a better job. It's to get to the top of the of your job, right? Get the promotions. And how do you do that? Well, you need to get skills. You need to get friends. But you don't have time to get skills and friends because you're too busy sleeping and eating. So you have to buy better better stuff so that you don't have to sleep as as long and this is something me and my sister just weren't very good at we, we didn't understand that 
you know, and we were also very ra like raised to be kind of miserly. So you wouldn't have to like the best stuff. Like, so my sister would even have her characters like sleep. Like she would have like, we, we both would have had like a house with like a main character and like just like a help character to like talk to. Cause you need to have that social, right? And, and she would just have like this help character sleep on a park bench, which was terrible because it would take so long for that character to get her sleep up. They wouldn't have any time for anything else, you know? So it's actually better to like spend a lot of money. And that's like, it's investment, right? And that's really the point of the entire game. You're like, you're just getting more money and then you get higher points, you get more time to like sleep and well, not sleep, to like uh, talk to people. And that's really the point. And really like, I, I played The Sims busting out, like uh, like free play. And this time I just made a family with like four characters. It's it's so optimal. It's so much better because the care you have four incomes. Well, really I had like one child, which like children in The Sims busting out are completely useless. You know, they just, they're just useless. Like really like even going to school doesn't really do anything. It just keeps them from being going into the military. That's it. You know, my, my kid just has like a 10. Like for all the classes, and it, I, I can't do anything anymore. But that, that's a different story. But like, even when they're just eating or just sitting watching television, like talking, like it's very optimal because they're just constantly like there's someone to talk to all the time. You know, characters often eat together. It's just optimal, kind of like in real life. You know, it's it's just it's very cost effective. But anyway, and that's like another thing where in video games and okay, so I actually had to split this video into two. Because on the one hand, I want to talk about games that are like, you know, I, I don't want to say RPGs, skin boxes, you know, games where you go questing and you go slaying monsters, you know, those kind of games, right? But on the other hand, I want to talk about platformers and specifically like Wario land platformers, because you know, Wario likes money, right? So, and it sounds like uh, you're not going to be able to film a video with that. I am. Like, it's actually very interesting how, how the, it developed in Wario land games, like, like it's, you know, it's weird, you know, it, it's money. There's a lot of money in those games. But uh, yeah, I, I split in two. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a long topic. Like, it's so much. But anyway, now I want to talk about active and kind of, you know, because in these games where you got questing and slaying monsters, um, money is very passive. It's, you get passive income. Right, like that's, you just get passive income. That's just how it happens, right? Because you're slaying monsters, which you're already going to do anyway, and they just reward you with money. But in The Sims, you know, it's very active. Because you have to send your Sims out to work, and that's all they're doing. And then when they come back, they get like a big, like they get like a bunch of money, you know, depending on the job. But you know, like it's, it's like one big, it's like one big burst of money. Instead of the other games where it's like, in uh, like an adventure games where it's like, um, you just make like five, five cents per enemy, something like that, right? It's very, it's all very gradual. And that's kind of the idea. Like the only source of money in those games, you can't really get a job. You can't really actively seek out money. That's it. Like you can just only get it over the course of a long time. And that's terrible because that, what happens when you actually really need money? You don't know. And this is this can be a break point because what if in one part of the game you just need money, and then you can in order to progress, and then you can you can progress because you need the money, but you need to get it, it just makes sense. And this is exactly what happened in Pokemon Red and Blue with the Safari Zone because I actually played Pokemon Yellow, and for some I I knew that Surf was in the Safari Zone. I just I, I don't know I just had a hunch, but I wasn't I, I was a little bit too young to like get through it. It was too confusing, and I completely ran out of money. Which in Pokemon Yellow, they actually fix it. So if you just keep talking, you keep trying to go in, they'll actually take like your money still. But so if you don't have enough, they'll only give you like 10 Safari Balls. So maybe seven, depending on your money. Even if you see, if you have, if you, even if you have zero money, they'll actually let you in with one. But I didn't know that. So I actually had to restart my save. They, they don't tell you that. I actually caught a shelter and I was like, Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna train Pokemon. You know, I'm just gonna have fun training Pokemon. And then I put my shelter in the daycare, and I was like, oh wait. E even if you need like money, and even taking it back like costs like a hundred bucks. But like in that in those games, you can't. I mean, I could have like reload my save, but I didn't. For you know, I I just had to reset anyway. You know, but there's no way to get more money in that game unless you like rebattle the Pokemon League. 
right? Like, or you have to catch a meow, which in Pokemon Yellow is impossible. And even in Pokemon Red and Blue, you just can't. Like, so there, there's just, there are like these catch 22s that appear. And why? Because money in those games is supposed to be gotten casually over a long period of time. And then in, in that situation, you know, the player doesn't even really know what the value is of money because they're just kind of getting it, you know, like, You'll be playing a game and suddenly you'll just have all this money and then you spend all in one burst. And this is exactly what happened in Earthbound. When I played Earthbound, right, I am, um, you know, in the beginning of the game, there's so much to spend money on. And a lot of those stuff is like pointless, but it's kind of fun. So in the beginning, you can only really like, without, without equipment, equipment, you can really only kill like, you know, three, three birds, like, a, or maybe like a dog or something, you know, while well, you're not killing them really. But you can only defeat like three of those before you have to go like heal. That's I didn't really feel safe because if you die, you don't really want to die. You know, like maybe you can take on three, you don't know. But you don't really want to like defeat one then go all the way back. So I was like kind of uh, poking around trying to figure out like how to get money or just get get some kind of progress going. But really you just had to like, like some kid was like selling like a baseball helmet and like a baseball bat. And like, yeah, you know, I could, I could buy one of them. But I, I don't want to, I kind of want to buy both at the same time. And also you can buy hints. I, I never needed any, but what if I want to buy hints? You know, sometimes you, you save through phones, but then what a pay phone, you know, you got to pay for it. There's also the bike, which is a really fun item. You know, like, have you seen that? Have you seen Ness like ride that bike, like the music? Oh, I mean, it's like the Sprite, so it, it's so good, but you can't even use it because a lot, because he has to be on his own. So the moment you get more party members, it doesn't work. Yeah, and it got like, they're selling like a for sale sign. And if you use the for sale sign, you can sell stuff to people. That's kind of fun. And you got all these condiments where it's like, oh, I'm going to buy ketchup. And if I eat a hot dog or a hamburger, the ketchup is automatically applied and it heals more. And that's kind of fun. But you just don't have money for anything. So you're kind of stuck in this, like you're going you're gonna to have to like very slowly scrounge up some money just to get some equipment. And this is kind of the same problem with like spells. Because in the beginning of the game, you, you need items to heal. You need it. That's what you need. Problem, problem is, the moment you get a healing spell, suddenly you don't anymore. Not really, right? So now, now the money starts stacking up. And that's what happened. Because at the end of the game, at the end of the game, I had so much money. It was, it was in the thousands. You know, I had like all my party members, they all had the best. I really couldn't buy any more equipment, right? Because you just... At some point, it's like, you know, oh, I got to buy this equipment. Sure, buy it. You know, I had all these brain lunches and which heal health and MP. And it was just, you're just done. And okay, what do I spend my money on now? Nothing. You spend on nothing. Money, and this, this is the problem, right? Money is either scarce as all hell or it's in such a, it's either inflated or deflated. And like, even like the middle, the middle ground is like, it's non-existent because the moment you spend some money, now it's like deflated again. And then for, if, you, if you're if you well-equipped, you don't need money, not really. So then the game designer has to be like, force you to spend money on something. And that sucks. You know, like, cause you have, see, then, then you're contriving a value. And that's the problem is a de game developer will put in money and then they'll come up with reasons for you to use it. That's how it works. That's how all game devs do it. They first put in the money and they're like, oh, now we need some cool weapons for the player to buy in a store. So that's always fun. You know, just give it as a reward for a quest. You know, even when they give money as a reward for a quest, it's like, yeah, we want to make a quest, but we don't know what reward to give. I uh, just give them money. <laughs> what, what, what do I do with that? I don't know, you buy a cool weapon in the, in the store. You know, just, you, I guess, I mean, you know, if, if the weapon's really expensive, you can you can do like three quests, but maybe just make the quest longer and I don't know, maybe you have the quest just be fun. You maybe do that, you know? I, I you know, it's 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 this it's this problem where they just contrive value and they have to add so many systems, like, you know, oh, what if we just add bartering? You know, maybe that's fun, but it's not really fun because here's the thing about money. It's, as a mechanic, it's not really fun. You know, it's not fun having to like, calculate how much money you have like how how rich am i what can i buy with this you know i'm like i am playing pokemon i need some proteins how much money how many proteins can i buy well i need to make do like a calculation you know and it's like is that fun do i have to like i have to like 
<laughs> balance my money and balance my checkbook. Uh, what, what am I doing? Like, it's not fun. Like, the idea is that it's challenging. Because, like, you know, there is kind of this sense of, like, scrounging up money that I do kind of like. Where when you don't have a lot of money, it is kind of challenging. Like, how am I going to budget this? Because actually in that game, in uh, The Sims, where I had those, those four characters, I was, like, building the house. And I was like, you know, each character had their own room. I was like, oh, I'm having fun, like, decorating. But then I ran out of money. And I didn't, hadn't bought... I hadn't bought the pets yet and I'd already built this entire house. And I was like, oh, now I need to kind of, you know, that's kind of like the, the one moment where it's kind of fun. Where it's like, oh, now I need, I'm just going to buy you a couch. This guy's going to sleep in the couch. You're going to share. They're going to like swap. You're going to take turns sleeping in the bed. And then in the beginning moment, that's like kind of fun. But then once you're through that stage, now you can have lots of money and now you're just spending it on stuff. It's not so much fun anymore and really i think in pokemon x and y that was like I, there was like a hotel where you could do like work each day and there were like three mini games you could do really not very fun you know like the first one like um memori memorizing like, pe uh, people's orders at max level impossible you had to you would have had to like write it down and you're not gonna do that every day like that sucked uh making bets that was kind of like because you're trying to do it as fast as possible you know like so it's very quick uh that one was the best one uh, finding like Bryson Man action figures. That one was doable, you know, it wasn't like just kind of going like one step up, one step A, one step A, but you got like money and it was like kind of cool because like it, it was the one time in Pokemon where I felt like I was kind of like financing my own adventure. You know, I'm not just beating up kids and like taking their lunch money, right? You know, it's like, oh, you, you beat the gym leader. Here, have a badge and a TM and like a bunch of money. And I don't even look at the money. Who well, looks at the money? You know, it's it, again, it's a thing where you, you're just doing your Pokemon adventure. Everything's going great. You know, Pokemon Center is free, you know. And then you're like, look at your money and go like, oh, I guess I'll just buy some stuff. And then you're like, well, you know, if I'm going to like catch Rayquaza or something, I'm probably going to need like 100 Ultra Balls or like 80 or like 50. And then you try buying that and you find out you can only buy 40. And you're like, you know, 40, that's maybe enough. But I'm probably going to have to catch some other Pokemon after that too. So, but I also want to have revives and max repels. You know, these are these things that you always want to have like some of. So really the best thing to do is just buy like a whole bunch of them immediately. But you can't. And you get in this, this weird, it's this weird thing where you're like, you know, like you already beat the game. You're like EV training, you know, you're doing, you're catching legendaries. And really, you know, why don't you just give me infinite money? You know, why do I have to buy like 20 Max Repels, 20 Ultra Balls, and 20 Revives? And then once I've like battled a bunch of trainers to level up my Pokemon to level 50, now I've got more money. Now I'm going to go back to the store again just to buy 20 of each. You know, why? It, it, it's not it's not that fun. You know, and like, actually, you know, oh my God, Pokemon X and Y, you know, you had that detective agency, right? You know, that side quest? That one was like, I, I like, I, I, Luker, such an asshole in that one. Remember that shit? Where he, he, he kept like jumping in, acting like he was the hero. What an asshole. You know, like, 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 you had this cute girl, Emma, and she's like, oh, I'm homeless. And you're like, I'll help you. And Luca's like, oh, no, I'm going to be like the, the father figure or something. So you're like, you know, she just gets like mind controlled and you like battle her. And it's like, oh, the mind control is wearing off. And Luca's like running in. <gasps> Did I miss anything? And she's like, oh, my God, Luca, you saved me. That fucking asshole. That fucking dick. And then, then he like, he's like, oh, I'm going to leave. But I'm going to buy the detective agency. And I'm so fucking pissed. You know, you know, I fucking worked my ass off in that hotel. I had the money, I had money, you know? But then he, he buys it? Why don't you let me buy it? Why can't I own a detective agency? It would have been so cool. Yeah, and then you walk in and it's like, and she's like, oh yeah, you don't have to be here. We got it covered. Y you got it covered. You're not gonna even let me like role play as if I have like a detective like case. Like, oh, you know, oh, hey, uh, hey Arpon, do you have, do you hear of any cases? And can I, I can be like, yes, I did. I made up this case. I'm just, I'm going to pretend. But you can't do that. You, you can't, they don't let you buy the, the, the thing. It, it, it's so crazy. It's so weird, right? And they also had those restaurants where you had like, you had to like defeat these girls like in a certain amount of turns. And then you got like nuggets, like really big nuggets, depending on like how well you did. And that's like, that was another way to get money. 
But like then, what do I spend it on? Uh, vitamins, you know, that's what you spend it on. It's it's not... It, 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 it's like, I, I do have an active... Like that hotel was kind of active. You know, I'm active in getting money. So in, like that, in those restaurants, that's also kind of like an active way to get money. It's kind of a good idea. But then I spent all these passive things where all these consumables that I kind of need, I, I just want like all of them, you know, like, you know, I need, I need 10 proteins. Oh, I don't need enough money. Okay. I guess I'm gonna, um, yeah, you know, I guess I'm gonna passively get it while I'm like, tra like leveling up my Pokemon by battling trainers. It's not that fun. It's just not <laughs> really. So let, let's talk a bit about this passive income, okay? So in these games, where you're going out adventuring, the way to do it is that they, the reason they give you money, like you, you defeat monsters and then you get experience points and money. Those are the two things you get. Now, oh, <laughs> immediately the reason they do that is to condition you to fight more enemies, which is always a really bad like thing to do. Like really fighting enemies in this game should be fun intrinsically. Right, you know, but that's not really how these games work. You know, that's why I call them skin boxes. You know, it's like the, the money is given to you as an extrinsic reward to condition you to do the battles. You know, you could just run away, you know, you need the experience points, but <laughs> that's the problem itself. Why are you getting both experience points and gold? That doesn't make any sense. Both are used for the same purpose of increasing your character's power, right? Because, because experience points, you reach the next level, you get points, you know, maybe you get like a spell. Okay, well, what do you would do with gold? Well, uh, you use it on equipment, which increases your stats. Or you can buy spells. In some games, you can buy spells. You know, like in, in Final Fantasy, you can buy spells. In Dragon Quest, you get spells from leveling up. Okay. Um, you know, even like in a game like Pokemon, like uh, Ultima Underworld, you actually you don't level up. You go to trainers and you spend money on trainers and then they increase your skills. You know, like in, in Elder Scrolls, you have like, you level up, but you also can spend money on trainers to increase your skill. It's it's the same. You know, it's, it's, it's the same mechanic, basically. And you can easily just get rid of the experience points or get rid of the money. You know, like, just get rid of the experience points. You know, I'm just buying stuff to increase my stats. You know, and like... I love these games even have like... I, 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 I feel like I'm playing like... To do like a whole video on this. But games like Kingdom Hearts and like Final Fantasy VII, their leveling up systems are like fake. Re really, they are. Because when you level up in Kingdom Hearts, you know, it will say like, attack up. Okay, by how much? One. One point. You level up in Kingdom Hearts, one point. That's what you get. And sometimes it's like uh, MP up. You get another like MP bar. Okay. Yeah, you really don't get many stats from leveling up. It's basically pointless. Meanwhile, if you equip even like a protect bang, right? Like uh, like the, the lowest level like equipment, that's a defense. That's the same you get from leveling up. Like when it's like, oh, defense up. It's the same. So if you equip like, if you buy two protect bangs from the store, that's two defense, that's two levels. You know, and even like, if you defeat like, um, if you defeat Sabor, you know, Sabor, danger. You know what you get? You get a white fang. That thing is like five level ups. It is, it's like AP up, attack up, defense up, you know. It's like three or four, like five levels. And the thing is, you get that from reach for, for reaching a certain part in the story, right? Okay, so why am I even like grinding to level up then? Why don't you just automatically increase my level to the point where it needs to be? Why even have leveling at all? Why not just have a normal difficulty curve, right? You know, like Zelda games have a normal difficulty curve. You know, like you got like heart containers and stuff. But you know, like it's like, oh, you're in this part of the game. Okay, well, your sword, you now get the master sword. Now enemies are going to be this strong. Just do that, right? And even in Kingdom Hearts 2, when you defeat a boss, you just get a level. All the characters just get a level. They do, like they get like the equivalent of a level. So then why am I leveling up? You know, and like in Final Fantasy 7, when you level up, you know, in Final Fantasy 6, they would show you your how many points you get. Even in Pokemon, you know, you level up. And they're like, oh, you Pikachu got the one HP, uh, two attack, you know, two speeds, you know. In Final Fantasy VII, they're not showing you that anymore. And you know why? Because when you level up, your stats increase by like zero or one. I'm not kidding. Like, ser seriously. And it's like random. But if, if one level gives you one, one uh, like attack, 
The next one will give you zero. It's one zero zero one one zero. It's like binary. Yeah, it, it literally that's that's how it works. It's random, but the next level will be guaranteed. So every single level is like it has a, just a number associated with it, and then like so it will like your your level will either be like like one hundred fifty two. Your, your tech will be either like 102 or 101, depending on like the dice roll. So uh, I level up to like level uh, 12. Uh, is my tech going to become 16 or is it going to become 17? Like, it's not going to change at all or it's going to go up by one. That's what rolls. And the next level is like, okay, at this point, you're supposed to have either 17 or 18. Okay. Uh, is your tech going to go up now? And then they roll. And next up is like, it, it, next level is still like, Oh, it, your tech is also already supposed to be like 17 or 18. So if you got your level, if you got your point last level, now you get nothing. I, I'm serious. I'm serious. That's how it works. So like, you know, like, like equipment matters way more. And equipment, you know, at the stores, they only sell better equipment at the next town. So uh, leveling up is lit like your strength is capped, it's, it increases way more when you just reach the next part of the game. But yeah, you know, like, why, at that point, why even have experience points? Like, sure, the reason those games have experience points is to make you grind. You know, like, you're just spending, like, even the money doesn't even really matter in those games, you know, like, most of it is just, you're just getting it, like, because you reach the next location. Okay, but even in games where that's not the case, you know, why are you getting both gold and experience points? They serve the same function. You know, it's really just there, just to be there. And really, why not just have the gold be like something you actively get, you know? Have like a job, you know? Have the players be like, I want to buy this thing and I'm going to put in effort to get it. You know, don't have it be passive. It's so lame. And especially, like, it creates this problem where, again, like, players will just have a bunch of money and then they don't know what to do with it. And so a lot of games... What they will do is they will actually have money sinks. And like money sinks, like really it, it's to curb inflation. And MMOs have a huge problem with like inflation, right? Because what do players do? Well, they go grind, they go grind enemies. And when they do that, they get both experience and gold. <laughs> you know, experience, there's a level cap. Okay, you know, like there's no, there's no experience economy that they, people can trade experience with each other. But they can trade money and items. Okay, here's an idea. Don't have enemies drop gold. You, you dumbass. Don't have it. Have it be get, gotten like some other way. You know, true jobs. You know, like maybe there's NPCs that need jobs doing. Okay? Because like what will MMOs will do is they'll have all kinds of like money sinks. Where it's like, oh, if you want to sell something on the market, you need to like in Moonscape, you have to spend like five gold. And so it also kind of makes it so that anything that is like worth less than five gold, people people aren't gonna sell sticks on the market because you don't make any money off that. You know, like you have to spend five gold. So if the if like you selling it makes less than like, if it only makes like four gold in profit while well, you just waste that on like the price. So that kind of helps. Uh, little games, well, uh, uh, really, most games, even non-MMOs, what to do is have the player buy consumables. And really consumables, oh my God. So really, there's two things you can buy in video games. Consumables and one-time purchases. You know, like, that's also kind of like one-time upgrades, but then you have to buy, like, the next upgrade as well. Consumables are like, okay, well, let me first say, tell you something else. Like, like really, these are all taxes, right? Like, like when you buy consumables or, like, you have to buy, like, like that's, or, or, or like, the, the stock markets, you know, that's tax. And in some games... That's all you do is like, you, really, money, you get the money and then the game has to arbitrarily create a reason for you to like get, for, to get rid of the money. You know, like it's like we condition you to get this money and now we need you to get rid of it. Okay, then what am I getting in the first place? You know, like, again, like as an extrinsic reward, but then what am I using it for? And a really good example for that is Dragon Quest. You know, like I'm, I, I'm, I've got like a whole script like reviewing Dragon Quest. And surely in the video, I'm going to talk about this as well. So maybe it's like kind of a double. But like in that game, you like money is they're very stingy. You know, if you play the first Final Fantasy, that game is not stingy with money. Dragon Quest is. 
at the beginning of the game, the king, you know, like, that's just a, such a great example. You know, you're saving the world. Why are they not buying everything for me? Because this king gives you like 140 gold or 240 gold or something as a startup. He does. He, it's an investment. He invests in you. And then you need to go to the next town and buy your equipment. And after that, you basically have no money left. Seriously, like you have almost nothing left. The thing is, the inns cost money. Like like 10 gold or something. Yeah, seriously, 8 gold or something. They cost money. The thing is, the slimes, the weakest enemy in the game, they give 1 gold. Or the red slimes give 2. That's right, they give, each gives like, okay, they give 1 experience and 1 gold for the blue slimes, 1 experience and 2 gold for the red slimes. Incredible. Incredible. The inn, 8 gold. You, you know what that means? You know what that means? If you go to the inn, you have to defeat at least 8 slimes for each time you go to the inn. Or else, you don't make progress in gold. You know, the experience is still going up. That, that, that still keeps going up. But yeah, you know, and they actually had to like, this again but it like creates problems. Because when you die in this game, usually in like kind of these anime skin boxes, uh, when you die, you just go back to the main menu and you just have to load the save. In this game, they can't do that. They can They couldn't do that. Because then you might get stuck. Because what happens when you save while well, you have no money and no health? Well, then you're stuck, right? So the king, what he does, you just go back to the king, but he takes, or something, something takes half your gold. Yeah, half your gold. So like, yes, you can heal for free, but you know, if you have less than eight gold, you can heal like for a less amount. That's it. Otherwise, you know, like you'd be grinding to get something and you'll accidentally die because enemies are, are bullshit in that game, right? And you'll just lose half your gold. So this entire game, you know, you're paying taxes because because these people, these inns and these weapon shops, they're probably paying that tax to the king. The king, fuck this asshole. Why am I? I'm going out to defeat monsters, risking my life to stop this fucking dragon lord, and they don't even give me the best armor from and, and weapons from the store. No, the inn isn't free. I'm saving the world here. Fuck you. So it's literally like you're. It's a job. When you're going out to kill monsters, it's a job. You've got a quota. You've got a fucking quota. And even every time you go into a dungeon, you have to, like, torches cost money too. Like seven gold, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the amount of light they give is nothing. It's nothing. But the thing is, it's, okay, get in the review, you'll see it. But it's terrible. Like, the thing is, like, you can't go into a dungeon without it, because then you're completely blind, right? Even like, in like Pokemon Ruby, not using flash, like having a little circle around you is the equivalent to using a torch in Dragon Quest. It's really bad. It's really bad. So that's another tax. Every time you go into a dungeon, pay eight gold in tax. Every time you use in tax, and you're you constantly you all you're doing is grinding to get your level up. But also like you need to get better better weapons because that's just a fat, faster rate of level, like leveling up isn't fast enough. The equipment is way faster, so you do need the gold. You do, and at the end of the game. There's this, this piece of armor you need, and this piece, this weapon you need, but they're just you, you can just find them in a treasure chest. That's the only that's the only time you can ever find any equipment in a chest. By the way, seriously, I'm not I'm not shitting you. So the moment you get those, the moment you get those, money becomes useless. Seriously, at the end of the game, it's like oh I died, whatever. I don't care. Money instantly becomes useless. It is incredible. It is. It's it's you're just paying taxes. It's so bad. It's so bad, and you're buying like herbs and shit. It's it's so bad. And then you know like once you get the spells to heal and like there's even like an item that brings you back to the castle, but like like a level after you even have the ability to like, because most of the game you're kind of close to the castle. Once you get to the bottom half of the map, that's also when you learn a spell that just brings you back anyway. And also you get a spell to like light up caves. So all these items, items just become useless, and you think like, and these items really aren't expensive. So it's not like, oh wow, I finally got the spell. So now I, I'll save, I'll save a bunch of money. So I don't need, you know, so I'll be able to get the good weapons later, like faster. But no, these weapons are so fucking expensive. It's all you're doing is grinding. It is so bad, and it's like, <laughs> the moment the money becomes useless, it's like, well, why is it even here? It's there to waste your time to make you grind. It's so bad. And that's not fun, is it? But you know, it also doesn't get very fun. 
when you get to the items. Yeah, because of course, you got Pokemon. And in Pokemon, oh man, you know, this is like the, the perfect example of like all these mechanics like just creating a mess. Because let's put it this way, right? Okay, you're going to Viridian Forest. You're like, oh, there's Weedle there. They will poison me. I'm going to buy some antidotes with my money. So then you, you buy the antidotes, like five. You get to Viridian Forest. What's there laying on the ground? Antidote, like one or two. And then you get through the whole forest and you only use like one or two antidotes. Okay, then why did they even buy it? Well, you bought it because you still need to be able to buy it because what if you run out? You know, like a lot of video games, and this is a good design decision. If a player needs something, you should give it to them. You know, even just as a hint, like, hey, you should probably have antidotes, you know? You know, give it to them. You know, give that thing that they need to them. You know, if it's consumable, just have that stuff in chest. Okay, okay, you know, that's a good idea. But what if it runs out? You know, then what even, why even have the store? Eh. And then, of course, you get the problem, you know, again, where it's like, you know, there's no limit on these items. So what if I get into a fight with a trainer and I'm like, um, should I use a revive? Because then you feel like you're cheating. And that's always the worst thing. Like, as a game designer, you really should avoid, like, making players feel like they're cheating. You really don't want that. That's, like, the worst thing. Because then they're like, they have to like put arbitrary rules on their, on themselves. That's the worst thing. But then, you know, like, like I, I played like Pokemon Soul Silver like a while ago. You know, like Pokemon Gold and Silver, not very good like leveling curve, like really not very well designed at all. Like probably like one of the worst designed Pokemon games, seriously. But like Lance, you know, he has, sure he has his three Dragonites, sure. But he also has like four full restores. And right there you're just wondering, okay, Am I allowed to use four full restores? What if he? What if I don't know if he has four full restores? You know, I'm like, uh, should I use a full restore? No, I don't want to cheat. Then he uses one. Okay, so now I'm allowed to use one. You know, it. He has four of them. You know, so what if I use eight? You know, what if I just spam revives? You know, because a lot of these times, you know, these battles aren't even fair. You know, like especially if you like people always like uh, talk like, oh, Pokemon Train Red, he's so cool. No, he's not. His Pokemon level eighty, like it's so unfair. You know, he has this arbitrary high-level Pokemon. Like, he sucks. His Pikachu sucks. Why does he involve his Pikachu? Why? Because he's just Ash Ketchum in disguise. You know, people don't want to admit that, but he is. He is. Evolve your Pikachu then, Red Hive. You're so good at Pokemon. You know, but like, he, he just has arbitrary high-level Pokemon. You know, like, how are you going to defeat that? Well, I managed to defeat him using, like, counter reflect and like, by, by using, like, counter mirror code, like, I had a Wobbuffet. And like a Heracross, like the, the tactic I had to use was insane. You have no idea, man. I had to set up like reflects and like light screens with my like uh, my Meganium and my Nocturne and stuff. So that my Wobbuffet would like survive the enemies, like at the enemy and then be able to hit back. And there's Snorlax. You know, my, my, his Snorlax, the way it worked was my Heracross just was a little bit too bulky for him to. So I was like, I'm going to use Endor and then I'm going to use Reversal. Thing is, like, Unless you were at 1 HP, Reversal wasn't strong enough. And like Snorlax just barely didn't deal enough damage. So the way I did it was I had to use Counter, then hit back on the Body Slam. And then I used Endor. And then he Body Slam. And then, because Snorlax is so slow, I was still able to outspeed, right? And then I Reversaled. And that was my strategy. But if in one of, either of these two hits I got paralyzed, too slow to like outspeed him. That I just had to full restore through that. And just like... We said it was terrible. It wasn't fun. I was just cheating. But that's like the only thing you gotta do. Like a lot of people even online, I looked up like how do other people do this? What they do, in order to even get there, you have to go like to this little section of a cave because like Mount Silver is super tiny. Super tiny. Pathetic. Like all these dungeons in Gold and Silver are super small. But you still kind of want to have Flash for that. So other people just brought like like one Pokemon to use Flash. I, I just thought it to my Noctowl because I was like, I I'm not... Nocta is going to be useful here anyway. You know, he got power crap pretty quickly. But like, even that's just lame. And then people just use sand attack, like cheese strats. It's like, that's not fun. I'm not having fun. I'm just spamming like full stores to just get the correct RNG to beat him. It's not fair. It's not fun. Because it's, I'm cheating. I am, but he's cheating too. It's not fun. And so like, okay, well, what's the limit on full stores anyway? It's money. So you could potentially like he potion your way through an entire game. You know, you'd be underleveled, but you know, it's you know you could. You know, let's say 
you you are one of those people who you know you're just grinding you're just fucking power leveling your Charizard. That's not a good idea. But if you use a bunch of po if you have like a bunch of Pokemon whose only purpose is to like oh I switched to my Nidorino who's like level like fourteen or something right and he just just uses revive on my Charizard and I switch to my Pitchy and they just use I'm just gonna like oh I'm just gonna use Hyper Potion on my Charizard boom send my Charizard back out. You could do that. It's stupid, but like okay. It works, but what if you run out of money? Now you're screwed. So it's like, if you use these, these consumables too much, it's it's really bad. It's even worse. Not using them at all is better. Like, grinding to get your Pokemon up to a level to just beat the Pokemon League, like beat lands, is way better than using Fall Restores. You may as well, you know, like... You're just gonna have like a really high leveled ice type and you just, just ice beam through him and then he doesn't even get to use his Volva Source. That's what you gotta do, but that sucks as well. So it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't. So then what are we doing? You know, it's so bad. What you gotta do is you gotta restrict that somehow. Like imagine if you had like, I don't know, imagine if you had like 10 points and a potion was like one point. So you could have like 10 potions with you or like, you know, antidotes. Those are also like one point. So it's like five antidotes, five potions. And you could just use those in the battle wh whichever way you wanted, you know? And like, if you went, you know, I I'm getting ahead of myself here, but like these, these, it's so bad. Like even with other items, you know, you know those consumables that, where there's only like a few or like one in the game and they're really strong, you know, like the Master Ball. Like the Master Ball is pretty useful, you know, like it's like, you only have a few legendaries. Okay, that makes sense. You just pick one and you throw it. Okay, uh, what about the Sacred Ash? You know, that, that whole item? But it's like, oh, revive all your Pokemon to at, at full health. Okay, there's only one in the game. When would I ever use this? Not in the Pokemon League. When would I use it? It's it's just kind of a waste. You know, like why? If I have a shit ton of money, why can't I just buy a Master Ball? If that's what I want to spend my money on. You know, and this is of course where you get into item stores, right? You know, it's like, oh, sorry, but you can't buy Ultra Balls here. Why not? You don't have the right batch. If I want to splurge all my money on an Ultra Ball... I should be able to do that. Except at the same time, you don't want to do that because, well, then your player doesn't learn how to use Pokeballs. And that's the problem, right? Like certain items just become crutches. Okay, you know, that's fine. Okay, but then, then you got the problem. Okay, well, I, I, I was like playing, you know, those weapons where it's like, hmm, I'm gonna, you know, this weapon is really powerful, but I only have like one. I'm gonna use this on the final boss. And then you're like, you're at the boss and you're like, well, what if he has another face? And then he doesn't. And then it's like, oh, I beat the game. Okay. But let's say you got a final boss and he just says, I'm the final boss. Super final. Nothing after this. Okay, I use the thing. Boom. He's dead. Okay, well, I just kind of skipped the final challenge. You know? Like, actually, I was playing this indie game called Iconfell. That game did not have a very good, like, leveling curve. Really not. But they gave me these bombs, and these bombs gave me the power, like they had like area effects, but really they also had like very high damage. So I'm like, I'm gonna use this to just kind of like burst through. But you don't really want to do that, because, well, eventually you still have to grind, right? And really I was like postponing the grinding. That's what it was. Because when I ran out of bombs, you can buy these. You can only get them in chests. Okay, then when am I supposed to use them? Right? You know, like, why are you giving me mechanics? that I can't rely on. That's really the problem. And really, like, this is one of those, like, really Reddit, like, like uh, comments, you know? It's like, oh, man, you know, like, this is one of those Reddit jokes, where our gaming jokes, right? But, like, honestly, I don't know why. Don't ask me, like, oh, why do game developers do this? I don't know. I don't know why they do it. <laughs> don't ask me. Like, it's just it's such a big problem. But it just keeps happening. All right, so I'm just going to, like, cut the shit. So like speed this up. So what is the solution to all this? Dark Souls. That's like really cliche to say, but it really is like Dark Souls. Because Estus Flask, it, it's it's brilliant. You know, it's it's actually genius, right? Because you know, it, again, it's, it's this realism thing where it's like, oh, you know, we can't have infinite potions. Yeah, yes, you can. Or we can like limit it. Yes, you can. Estus Flask, it's like. Every time you, you rest at the bonfire, you just get five Estus Flask. And then you, you only get five. And it feels fair. It's not cheating. It's so, it's so good. 
it's it's it makes so much sense. You know, so again, like apply this to Pokemon. Every time you go to a Pokemon Center, just refill your points or something. You know, and then it's like, okay, if you want to use a full restore, that's 10 points. You know, like uh, Revive, 3 points. Max Potion, you know, that's like 8 points because it's like, it doesn't heal status. You know, full heal is like 2, po two 3 points. You know, it, it's so useful. Because then, you know, the player, is, it doesn't feel like cheating. Because, you know, spamming full restores, anyone can do that, you know. But if you only have one, now you got to be really tactical with it. you got to pick which Pokemon. At what moment, you because know, if if your Pokemon is at like 10 health and you use the full restore and then they get hit to 10 health again, you didn't make progress. You know, it's it's fair. You know, it's it's so much better. And it's like it's it's so good. Cause like, you know, like when I play Dark Souls, you know, I play really carefully. You know, I, I kinda like I kinda like the like slower pace. A lot of people are like, oh like Bloodborne is better because it's faster. You know, I, that's like an opinion thing, right? But like I would be so careful, right? Because um and it's actually something I learned from like playing Zelda too. You know, the less you die, the more experience you have. So you level up quicker, quicker, and then you're you're stronger. You know, it gets easier. It's it's one of those like reinforcing things where it's like if you're dying a lot, you're gonna you're gonna be weaker and you're gonna die even more, right? So if you just if you play like kind of defensively and go back to town like uh, home earlier, you'll keep more. You'll die less. And like in Dark Souls, this is weird mechanic. Where sometimes your humanity will just increase by like one point, like boop. Like one time I even had like two, it's like, oh, sometimes I would even have like two humanity. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like use it to do like, uh, like what, what's it called? You know, make it so that I get 10 acids flasks at this bonfire, you know, and then I feel have even more health, you know, and like it's, it's so useful, right? Because even 10 acids flasks, you know, it's just, it's just more consistent. You know, you just have more healing, you know, it, it's, yeah, you can also use like you, you you can also like buy humanity or like grind for it, but I, I never need to do that. Some people do, you know, but but not me because I'm I'm really good. I'm super good, but like this just solves the problem. And in Pokemon, you know, kind of like health items are kind of like that, you know, which are like oh citrus berry. Uh, but like you know, the problem with that is that you know like through your throughout your main adventure, uh, those don't like you don't get them back, you know, like. They do take resources, but in the battle tower, they just re refill. You know, they just, you just get them back, you know, and that's good. You know, because it's like reliable. You know, when you take away this need to have these things be consumable forever, you know, when just, when you just respawn, when you go back to the safe zone, like, that's brilliant, you know, because it's something to rely on. You know, even like in Yu-Gi-Oh, like imagine if you do a duel and you like activate like a, Solemn judgment or something. Uh, pay half your life points and like, like just the, just, um, just like you know, like uh, destroy anything, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, next duel. Uh, you start with four thousand life points and your opponent with eight thousand. That sucks because it's not reliable. And we let that's like another thing, you know, like in games when you like having money be like the downside to something. It's really a bad idea. Because it's like, oh, you know, what's the downside to have to using like twelve, like um, full restores in a in a fight? What's the downside? The downside. The downside is that you need to spend the money on it. That's the downside, but it's not a good downside, because that's like a long term downside, not a short term one. You know, like if I sure if I do that in every fight, it's gonna be bad. But I can't do it, so it's it, it's kind of like why pay to win is so fucked up. Because if you're going against a player who's paid to win, well, you just lose the fight. And then, you know, is the player going to do it on every fight? They might, but, you know, eventually going to run out of money. You know, and then they're just, like, screwed. And sure, you, you could be like, oh, this guy's doing pay to win. I'm also going to do pay to win. But then, like, the company makes, like, double money. And so it, like, cancels out. So then why, why would, why, what, what are we even doing? You know, it's just exploitative, right? And, like, you know, you got to have a downside. It's like using Hyperbeam. You know, if hi if using Hyper Beam didn't give you a recharge turn, but just cost cost you money, it costs you five hundred poker dollars to use like Hyper Beam. People would be spamming it even more. Like, why not? Right? You get, you get the money if you have the money. Why not? You know that is a, it's a good money sink, I guess. You know, but like that's not a good downside. You know, having a recharge turn that's a good downside. It's strategic. It adds something to the game. You know, and that's also like good thing in Yu Gi Oh. You know, like. Some cards, some effects have a cost that's like discharge this, like uh, discard a card from your hand. But you might want to do that. Like if there's a card in your hand that you want to have in the graveyard because it has a really good graveyard effect, that's kind of an upside. And they 
you can get these interesting combinations. You know, like, because some effects only activate when you have a certain amount of life points. Like, one of the best early combos in Yu-Gi-Oh! was you summon Cyberstein. Cyberstein had an effect where you could pay 4,000 life points in order to special summon any fusion monster. What would people do? Special summon the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The Blue Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And then they used Megamorph, which is an equip spell, which doubles attack if your life points are lower than your opponents and halves your, your monster attack if they're higher. So, okay, you just spent half your life points. Yeah. Blue Eyes White Ultimate Dragon now has 9,000 attack. It's one hit KO in your opponents. That was a combo. You know, that's a good, it's a good cost. It's strategic. There's something to it. There's, there's something to interact with there. Money, it, it's that's not good. It's not interesting. If you have, like, again, like with these bombs, with a Master Ball, even like a Sacred Ash, have a downside. Have the player, like, have to, like, charge up the bomb or something. Like, something like they have to, like, spend something that isn't money. They have to do something, st- st- like, tactical, like, in the short term. It's a short, short term benefit. It should have a short term, like, like penalty, right? You know, it, it can win you the game, it can lose you the game. And that, those are good costs, you know? That's, it's like, oh, well, sometimes you have to tribute a monster in order to activate effect. Okay, that can be good, you know? Like, you gotta discard, five, you gotta put five cards on your deck in the graveyard. That can be good. You know, you gotta banish a monster. You know, if there's a monster that gains attack, depending on how many monsters are banished, that can be good. You know, like, it's like, I activate, uh, what's that card called? A pot of, pot of avarice? I don't know, it's like, oh, banish five cards face down. Okay, uh, that's good, because I got this I got this monster that just gets uh, like a bunch of attack for f- banished monsters. That's good. That's a good cost. Now there's like some interaction with that. Money doesn't have that. It doesn't have, it's not interesting. And then, of course, but then, oh my god, then you get to Bloodborne. And like Bloodborne fans are like, must be, like it's like, what the fuck were they thinking? Right? Because it's like, oh, now we're going to have blood files. How do you get blood files? You either, you, they're, they're, you don't get them back when you die. <laughs> Instead, you gotta, they drop off my enemies. Or you gotta like, well, you do have a limit of 20, or you gotta buy them. Yeah, so it's it's a consumable that you have to buy with money. It's great, isn't it great? Oh, Bloodborne is so good, but oh, not the fucking blood files. So, of course, if you're down a boss, you're like, oh, I died. Let me get some more blood files, because, you know, that's kind of that's kind of important. Oh, wait, I don't have any souls. So now I, I, now I need to go defeat some enemies to get souls, or maybe they'll drop some. You know, I mean, I guess on the way to Ross, you know, you can fight some enemies. Maybe that was the intention, you know, like force people to fight enemies, because a lot of people just skip them, which I never do. Again, you know, slow and steady is way better, because if you just run past them, you know, they'll just kill you. You know, people are really impatient, impatient with that. You know, it's like, oh, faster, faster. You know, like, you know, sometimes she, that's not a good idea. But, you know, whatever. It's like, again, like an opinion thing. But, like, you know, like, Estes Flask is better. You know, like, it really should, like, really should, like, the, those players really just shouldn't rush through, like, anyway. You know, that already they're being punished by just rushing, by just getting hit a bunch, right? And then they have to use the Estes Flask. Not a good idea. You know? But then, like, uh, they also get something like an Elden Ring. We can allow like sweet like kind of like budgets, you know, like essence flasks. But you also got like these magic flasks, which will restore magic. Okay, you know, like again, you're doing like potions, full heals. That, that's smart. That's a good idea. And really, okay. So I've been talking about like, okay, let's just finish this whole thing about items because you know what the game also does like uh, those potions really well. You know, like uh, like because uh, really it doesn't even have to be healing. It can be anything, you know, like, again, like, kind of with Pokemon items, you know, why not have a consumable, like, you know, like a gem? You know, those were pretty good, you know, those, those kind of like the pseudo uh, Z moves, you know, that's a consumable, but for offense, you know? And another game series that does this really well is Zelda. Now, Zelda games aren't really that hard, so the potions don't really, like, the, you got the, the bottles, right? And of course, you can do quests to get more bottles, but in general, you have to, like two or three, right? Now, think about that, you can fill them with anything. You can fill them with fairies. You can fill them with magic increases, but that's that's usually not useful because it's like, oh no, I'm out of magic, so I can't use my deck relief. You know, like they usually have magic around. You know, like even in boss fights, it's not that hard. You know, I mean, if you're really bad at the game, sure, okay. But there are, it's you know, there's a limit. There's only four. You can only bring four, only four empty bottles, 
and you can put like you can put a bunch of stuff in them and especially like uh, you know like if wind waker was like harder because you have like the magic like armor right like that would be like a good thing to use but it's not the game's not hard you don't really need it so that'd be a good way to like use like a potion you know like but then you know like you, pre you have to preemptively activate the magic armor so why not just use a potion to heal off the damage anyway I I instead you know that's just better Skyward Sword was really cool though, like, uh, sure you had some potions that weren't so good, you know, like the, the water bring potion, if you're really bad at like the underwater sections, okay. Um, but there was also like a potion that like, restored your shield, and it upgraded but also restored some health. I used that like in a in a consecutive playthrough, I used it like once, but once you get the self-healing shield, you know, it's like, you know, it's only like an early game thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's not very good, but like actually the stamina potion is really interesting, because Again, like usually you don't need it because any time you need to run up something, there's just those fruits. They're just laying around. But especially if you've got the upgraded one and you've got like the time enhanced metal, uh, that means that you can, that, that it lasts a long time. So if you go to like Lanayu Desert, you can just run through all the quicksand. It's actually really good. Of course, like for speed runs, you know, I mean, even the unupgraded one probably lasts a decent amount of time. So you can probably get some shortcuts out of that. Or really, it's just it's just convenient, you know, to just be able to run through through all of that. You know, it is very useful in that way. You can also use it for combat. You know, do like spin attacks because those cost uh, stamina as well. You know, that's a use. That's that's good. You know, it's just not you, you got to catch all those bugs. It's a little bit inconvenient. It got spend money. It's it's inconvenient, but it, it again because it's a consumable. So really, it should just be restored, right? You know, but it is. It is kind of interesting to have all those choices because it doesn't just have to be healing. It can be other stuff. And really in Team Fortress 2, you have Man vs. Machine. And it's like a really good example because say you got like the power-up canteen and there, you know, the money is temporary anyway. You're just using the money to buy upgrades. And it's like a lot better. That's just way better because then you're like, you're spending the money. If you're, if you get using those crits, like buying a crit canteen, if that saves you the rounds, that's really good, you know, like you got like, and you got all these different ones, you got like critical hits, like three charges of critical hits. Okay, uh, uber charge, that's good. You know, teleport to spawn, you know, like a, a robot got through. Oh no, we have to get to spawn right now. Teleport there, okay. Engineer needs to re like uh, upgrade all those buildings. Yeah, they all got destroyed, okay. Get a power-up canteen for that. It, it's really useful, useful, cause it's like, it's like active choice. Now you're being proactive, you're not just healing off damage. You're like spending that to like have some offensive power or restabilize or something. It's way more interesting than just having like, oh, I'm at low health, I heal. It's not interesting, right? So that's kind of like the whole thing on consumables. Thing with it though, ultimately my answer to that is don't have money, just have it be free. That's the solution really. But going back to the whole money thing, uh, Dark Souls also kind of fixes that because in Dark Souls, uh, money and experience points are the same thing. They're the same thing, right? You know, like you get them both from enemies because it's souls, but that's so much better because now the player has so much more of a grasp of how much something costs. Because, you know, especially when you die, you lose all your experience points. You lose all your souls, which means you also lose all your money. So, you know, you, you, you have all these souls and you're like, I'm going to upgrade and I got some souls left over. Let's buy something, you know, or I'm like, oh, I'm not going to spend this, these souls on leveling up. I'm going to spend to increase, to upgrade my pyromancy or buy a new pyromancy spell or another spell or something or upgrade my weapons. And those, you know, offensively can actually give you more power than just leveling up your strength or something, right? <coughs> mm. Hey, fever, man. That's, it's, it's a choice. And, you know, like, then you know how much money you have, which a lot of time is zero, right? But now it's, like, a lot more clear. Because you've got, like, like 1,574,000 gold. It's like, well, wow, how much is that? I don't know. What, how many max repels can I buy with this? You know, but instead you're like, okay, I want this item. I want this upgrade. How many souls do I need? And then you can kind of, like, keep an eye on that. It's so much better. And like, uh, what, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, I got, 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 got like, like a hair in my mouth. This is this video is full of distractions. Yeah.
Lé. Lé. Hum. Okay. And uh, also like uh, Castlevania 2 also had like, okay. So in Castlevania, usually you have hearts, which are like ammo. In Castlevania 2, it's money, but it's also experience points. And it's also still ammo. It is like some weapon, some sub weapons like the flame, the fire uh, tower, take hearts. Yeah, now the experience points you just get separate, like you get the heart and then it it's equal to a bunch of experience points. Of course, leveling up in Castlevania 2 is pointless. Like level 2 or like level 3 gives you like double health and that's it. Nothing else does anything. But the funny thing is, the consumable, like the ammo and the money are the same. So at one point I was like, oh, I got enough hearts to go get the whip upgrade. Okay. And then on my way there, I used like a bunch of fire pillars and I arrived there. I'm like, I don't have enough money. How? how? And I'm like, I, I used this ammo. <laughs> I used this ammo. Yeah, but you know, it's that doesn't really work as well. But it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funny how like Zelda 2 and Castlevania 2 are all like, uh, kind of like Dark Souls. You know, because like if you die, you lose all the experience points. Just like in Dark Souls, it's very punishing. You know, because that's really what this It's just very punishing games, you know. Yeah, they're also kind of medieval themed and they're kind of like gothic and they can use with your sword and you can do battle. Yeah, okay. But you know, that's, that's just a really good solution to just have it. Although like, I really don't like upgrading, you know, in those games. Because it's like, you know, in Dark Souls, it's like, because then you have like a different weapon. You're like, okay, well, I've got this one weapon upgraded. Is this other weapon better at this level if I upgrade it? Well, I don't know. So... Yeah, I just end up like staying with the same weapon. That's not very fun, you know, like really upgrading weapons. Really, I don't think that should even be done unless it's like, really you should just equip the souls and the, uh, you know, that's probably like a better idea. Just equip like the, uh, what are they called? The uh, Titanite Shards. Cause then you can like, or maybe just have like a, 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 a compare feature. Where it's like, oh, how strong is this weapon? At level 10. Just do that. Way easier. Like, yeah, but you know, like you do, you are like making some more active choices where, okay, what do I want now? Which item, you know, what am I going to spend my souls on? And if you spend on this and your levels, okay, spend on items. Okay. It still increases your level, right? It still increases your power. It's, it, it actually makes sense, right? You know, like why even have gold? Like in Dark Souls, you know, they have money, they have souls, you know, and that's their money. Okay. You know, but it, it works better. You know, it's it's not realistic, but it works. It mechanically works. It's actually like kind of solves a problem. Of course, you could also have like no no souls or anything or like upgrades. You know, you could just pick up weapons. Uh, you could do that too. But then you can't. Yeah, then you can't, you can't have the whole punishing thing where it's like it's like oh you you die and you lost your weapon. Maybe you could do that, but no, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to have them lose their weapons. You know, but your souls, okay, you know, that's something they can be like, kind of, kind of be careful about. Oh, I, I don't want to lose my experience points. Okay, you know, that's fine. There's actually like, experience points actually have more of a purpose in that way. So, okay, now, now I may as well, okay, now I may as well talk about stores, item stores. Oh my God, this is one of those things where it's like, why are you even bothering with this? This is one of those mechanics where you're just wasting your own time by including it. Because these item stores, you go to the item store and then what? What are they selling there? Stuff you don't need. Stuff you can find out in the open. Like in Skyrim, it's like, oh, I can buy leather armor. I can buy iron armor. I can find that on dead bandits. Like the bandits are all dead. I can just grab it off of them. You know? I can just grab it off of them. It's not even worth the money. Like it's it's very expensive in the store. You know, and then I, when I sell it, it's like less. You know, it it sucks. And then these kids, they're like, oh, but if we were to include a barter system, wow, a barter system. Now we get to barter. How does that work? Well, it's like a thing. It's like, um, I I'll pay less. I'll oh that's forty. I I uh, I pay twenty. And the guy's like, I don't like that. You made me a little bit angry. And you're like, okay, what well, about twenty five? I don't like that. You make me even more angry. You know, like, okay, last chance. Uh, um, 30. Sorry, but I'm really angry. I'm really angry. You get out of my store. Turns out you, you're supposed to pay 32. You're two gold off. Sorry. 
and it's so lame because it's so static. You know, like if you have if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, if you have like a human, like bartering with a human makes sense because it, it's it's more natural. You know, like they actually have motivations, like like they have the motivation to sell it at a certain price. Okay, computers don't have that because in a video game, you know, the store owner it doesn't actually have a business. It's all fake. It's a fake economy, and that's kind of the weird thing where these games will try to have like a realistic economy with like money and like bartering and like, but these people are not real. There is no economy. When you spend gold in these stores, the money the money vanishes. Well, well in Skyrim, it's just like you, you can just, you can then like sell stuff to them to get it back. But it's like even that's like completely arbitrary because then like in like a week, you know they just restock. Where does this restock come from? I don't know. But how did oh suddenly we have money again? Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna invest money in your store, and now you forever have five hundred more gold to like barter with. Because I gave you five gold, hundred gold at one time. Why? It's all fake, you know. Like, why can't I just sell whatever? You know. Oh, it's like I got this really strong, good item, and I want to sell it. Sorry, but none of the people here. You gotta have like an upgrade to make it so that they can give you a fair price for your super item. Bitch, please come on. And then it's like, you know, then games will be like, oh, you have a barter skill. Where it's like the higher it is, you just spend, you just earn less, you just everything just costs less. And everything just sells for more when you have a high skill in that. And that's like, like, what is the point at that? Like, who's even gonna like specialize in that? Like, oh, I'm not gonna put my points into into shooting guns. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna, you know, why why buy more bullets when you can have each bullet do more damage, right? Like in Fallout or something. You know, like why why buy? Oh, it's like I can buy so many more bullets. Well, they're gonna deal less damage anyway. So now you need to shoot more bullets. It's not good. It's not good. Not a good idea. And then you, oh man, have you ever played uh, Tingles Rose and Rupert Land? You know, Europe only? That game's like really wacky, really fun. You know, the whole game's about rupees and you gotta like barter with everyone. And the way it works is that if you don't give, if you don't offer enough rupees, you just lose the rupees you even offered. So it's actually really dangerous to like spend too little. So you actually wanna overspend. But the problem with that though, is the entire game is about rupees. So the, the less you're on the mark, the more you overspend, um, and the more you underspend, the less rupees you have for later. So if you're really doing really bad in the beginning of the game, at the end of the game, you have way less rupees. And so you actually have to grind and like create a bunch of like potions with like ingredients to sell. And eventually, you know, at the end of the game, I just looked up like the values. Because it comes to a point where it's like, you know, what do I want to do? You know, I, I, I've played through the whole game. I'm kind of sick of this mechanic. I'm done with it. I'm so bored with this mechanic. You know, like the whole game, it's not actually that fun. Because you're just guessing. You're gambling. You're guessing. Okay, just please just end it. You know, you got to like pay for everything costs money. You got to pay for like bodyguards because otherwise you just can't do combat at all because Tingle sucks to combat. And, you know, if you, if you run out of money... You, you might actually have to go all the way back to the first area so that Tingle can defeat enemies on his own and then can slowly build up rupees again or something. Because you can only get ingredients from killing enemies. Well, you can also get from trees and stuff. So it's like, yeah, okay. But eventually you're just done. You're just done. You just, you're just the whole point's about getting as many rupees. But, you know, just look it up then. You know, it's it comes this thing where money, it's just a burden. It's just such a burden. Because like you, you need it's either too much or there's too little of it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's the hair. Ugh. Gross. That's that's just ultimately the problem. And it's not fun to be in that position to be like, I don't have enough money. You know, if it's an active thing, that it's really that's the best thing. Just make it active. Just make it so that players be like, I need money now. And then they actually have an option to get it. They actually have an option. It's like like a fun mini game or something, you know? Or it's like, you know, if the whole point is about making money, okay. But don't have them like gamble for it. Don't do that. You know, make it something that they can actually work, when they actually feel rewarded. Where it's like, I did this. I did it. You know, not like money is just kind of, like it's like kind of snowing from the sky. Where it's like you have to like catch it with your with your tongue, like while you're fighting monsters. Like oh, look a little bit, like five gold. Wow, I'm gonna loot this and this skeleton. Oh, five gold, seven gold, eight gold, four gold, two gold, five gold, seven gold. 
Oh, look at chess with like 12 gold. Oh, look, there's some like 20 gold sitting on this table. You gotta pick them up all individually. It's like, oh my God, like... And ultimately, you know, if a player needs something, just give it to him. Just give it to him. Make it like something they can rely on. Give a different downside. Have it cost them, you know, like, oh, I don't want to cast a spell. You need to spend, like, it costs a little bit of health. You know, and then you got like, you gotta like, you know, heal back up by going to like home or by like using another different spell. Okay, you know, that's useful. You know, have it like, be like, oh, in order to do this, this, this really strong item, you just have this weapon and the bullets, you don't have to buy bullets. You, you just, you just have bullets, but like they cost like, you need to charge them up. It's a gun. And like, in order to shoot, you gotta like charge it, like, like an energy gun, you know, and it, it works on solar energy. I don't know. Like, it's so much better. You're like a potion that works on like a timer. Like, you know, it's like in, like in, a, like in a, you know, Team Fortress 2 or Overwatch, you know, like your sandwich, it just fucking re recharges over time. I don't need to spend money on it. It's just on a timer. And that makes it reliable. It makes it something where it's in the short, short term, it's worse. I, I can't, you know, I can't spam sandwiches, but in the long run, it's better. And that's really what it's all about. And honestly, I don't know. I think I talked about everything. Well, actually, I don't think so. I think I, I missed parts or I, I talked about it in different ways. But at this point, uh, let me see. Money creates problems, arbitrary value, money sings. Um, yeah, you know, it's like, I'm gonna watch this back and we're like, oh, need to talk about that. But I really should quit this now because you've probably been watching for like an hour. You know, it's, I, I wanna, I just know I missed something. <sighs> that sucks. You know, really just make everything free. Actually, that's the one thing I want to say. So is, um, you know, why do things cost money anyway? You know, like why, like your, your player, your, the, the main character has a job to do. He has to save the world or something. Why does he have to worry about finances? Why can't he just get the stuff he needs? You know, why is it that money, like again, like you're going out to fight monsters and you're getting money from them? Is that even like, like, of course that's not realistic, but it's not fun. It's not interesting. It's, they're not making interesting decision to that. Like, it's just, it's just because money has to come from somewhere. It just, it grows on trees. And then you kill the trees, and then they drop the trees. They, they drop the money. They drop the money when you kill the tree. That's how it works. You got a tree monster, you know, it grows on trees. Where did these monsters get all this money? Uh, my theory is that, like, they, they eat adventurers, you know, like a, a merchant. It's like, la, 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 la. And then they get eaten, and then you cut their, you kill the monster, cut their stomach over. Oh, look at this, look at a skeleton, and it's a bunch of money. You know, that's something. You know, that's something they, that's like to explain it. But, like, you know, especially like in Dragon Quest, where it's just like the monsters have infinite money. Where, where, are they, where are they getting it? You know, like the, the store, like the entire economy is based around, entirely around your character. Because if you're not going around adventuring, they don't have any money. Like these people selling weapons, who are they selling weapons to? Well, to me. They're selling it to me. No one else. You know, it would be cool if I had some like hell, but no, they're selling it to you. Great business, you know, like this one guy, <laughs> he sold a single, a single club. And clothes, and then this other store in this completely other different town sold a flame sword one time, which is way more, way more valuable. He made way more money. The one guy made like fifteen gold. The other one, five thousand. Great economy you got there, honey. No one else is buying. Oh, I guess they're buying clothes, maybe. And yeah, who else is like buying this flame sword? No one. No one can afford that there. And you know, like, why isn't it in real life? You know, why can't we just have the things we need? You know, it's like I'm going to the store and I'm like, oh, I need to buy, pay money to buy rent, to like get a bread. But I need this bread to live. I'm like, sorry, but uh, you need to do a job. Okay, why? Why do I need to do a job? Well, because, you know, and like, depending on which job I do, I deserve more bread. I can buy more bread. You know, it's like, why, why can't I just buy? <laughs> like this other guy, his job is worth more. So he gets to buy more bread than I do. You know, it's like, oh, even water, you know, water costs money. Why? Well, that's so to prevent people from buying, like, 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 oh, just opening the taps and just letting it all flow, you know? Okay, well, why can't you just put a limit on that? 
Why is this one guy, this one family allowed to just like spray their entire like f four cubic kilometers, like 10 kilometers of fucking yard with water and like fill like up three like uh, swimming pools. But but I'm not, I don't even have a swimming pool to fill up, you know? Oh, but they paid for it. Okay. Why? Why? <laughs> Why is their job worth more? You know, like this is this is unfair. It's unfair, you know, and especially if you're like going around fighting monsters, you know, oh, you killed a slime. Why is it worth only one gold? Well, because that's what he had on him, you know. Okay, well, why doesn't the king pay me? And actually, uh, that's uh, uh, this is the last thing I'll say about it. This was hilarious. You'll see this in review as well. In the castle, there's this room. That this immediately you find this room, like there's like three treasure chests and like a soldier behind like a, a door. And this is like a magic door. You need a magic key in like another town. So you buy the magic key, and these these doors respawn. By the way, if you leave the area, so it's like forty gold, like forty five gold, and you go in there, and you're like, oh man, four treasure chests. Surely this is some good treasure. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. And the soldier. I kid you not, this guard is like, real heroes don't steal. Implying that if I take what's in those chests, it's stealing from the king. I stole from the king. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him, dude. He even has like another magic door and behind that is a store that sells magic keys. You know, in case you need more. So it's like, if you run out of magic keys, it's like, it's a convenience. If you have a magic key, you can now buy magic keys at the castle. It's convenient right but they're more expensive than the other town seriously so but in in these chests together it's like 35 gold like one has like 10 gold or seven it's not worth it so it's it doesn't even cover the cost of the key but no it's stealing when i take these this gold from these chests the fucking asshole king this fucking king is thrown who saved my daughter what a fucking asshole won't even cover my expenses won't even cover my expenses so why even have the gold just to make me fucking grind for it? That's why they do it. That's why they do it, you know, because I'm already leveling up. I, I'm finding, I can find the best armor and the best sword in chests that are just like out there. So just do that. Just have everything rewarded by quests. Just have everything be rewarded by finding it in like the worlds. Just do that. Don't give players gold as a reward, you know, like... Just, just have it be their, like, doing the quest be their own rewards, you know? And that's honestly, it's like a crutch. That's what it is. It's arbitrary. You don't need the money. It's, it's pointless. Just give me what I need. Just have me make interesting de decisions, you know? Even have to pay with my own blood, you know? Like, like Metro, you know, those Metro games where it's like, oh, bullets are money. Okay, you know, if I shoot a monster, okay, I'm, I'm shooting with money. That's probably even better, you know? <laughs> that's like, that's something. That's something. I'm shooting money. Okay, at least that's a use. That's a consumable for you. Yeah. I got a cool Jolteon. That, that's the end of the video. Boom. Anyway, next time I'm going to tell you about how Wario is an idiot because he loves money, but in his games he's constantly spending money. What a dumbass. Yeah, okay, right, so this is what I mean, right? Is I just remembered something I want to talk about. And that was like, I forgot to talk about like one-time purchases. You know, because you got like the the consumables and you got like the one-time purchases, right? Where you got these one-time purchases, you know, once you're, once you, these, it's like uh, stuff for your house, right? It's like, oh, I can buy a house and then I can upgrade the house, you know, like in Skyrim again. It's like, I'm gonna buy this house and I'm gonna like, I got like alchemy station and like enchanting and it's, you know, it's convenient. It's convenient to have all this stuff, like you can like store stuff. Okay, but there's a limit because you can only buy it once, right? And usually you're only gonna buy that stuff when you have money to splurge, right? So again, it becomes this problem where, you know, you're gonna buy the necessary stuff first. And so really you're only gonna buy the stuff at the end of the game. Or once you're like super duper ultra rich, where money doesn't even really matter anymore. And so it's like, what, what are we even like, now you have to like, like it, it's a lot more, because now the developer has to like make more stuff. You know, it's like you, you, they make this cool weapon, like the Rhino in Ratchet and Clank. Okay, well that costs a bunch of money, but once you've bought it, it's over. You know, you've bought everything. You know, you, you got all the golden weapons, you got the Rhino, 
sure you can keep playing the game, but now you get all these bolts that you can't use just for ammo. And that's like the consumables again, right? So yeah, it's like, you know, I'm not gonna save up the money for the Rhino. It's way better to just get a different weapons that are actually more useful, you know? I guess I could do everything with my wrench and then save up the money really fast. But like, eh. And it's also like that game also had like a, one of the upgrades was like uh, that, that uh, hypnosis machine, you know? Where it's like, oh, you will, and it's like, oh, it, it, it gives you a discount. But it only gives you a discount on the weapons, not on the money, on not on the ammo. So if you want to optimize that, you had to like not buy that many weapons until you got that. And it was like in a later part of the game. So I got this upgrade basically for nothing, just to save a few bolts. And then I just used the bolts on like the golden weapons and the rhino anyway. So I didn't even save that much money. It's like, I, I just, <laughs> Then what's the point? You know, these are per once I buy the weapon, it's over. The, the, the hypnosis thing doesn't even really do a lot. It's, yeah, it's it's a money thing, but it's a one time. And so they actually have to like compensate and make it extra expensive. But then once, uh, once you're done with that, it's like, oh, well now I don't need money. It's now even more useless. You know, I buy ammo. Yeah, okay. I guess, you know, I can also, I guess I can use ammo less. I can use more of my... Uh, wrench or i can just get play two levels and get like those getstron crates okay that saves money um ultimately like you know that's what i'm gonna talk about it's it's not a good option just give players like a, just give two players as a reward you know like oh i get to upgrade a house okay i'm gonna quit the game like after i buy this anyway it doesn't matter just give it to him. Yeah, that's the video, I guess. Unless I've, I, I remember something else to talk about.